Welcome back. Glad you made it, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me once again. It's Wednesday, July the 31st, 2024. Bringing it, bringing the heat, baby. Bringing it once again. Thank you for joining me. If it's your first time, buckle up, buckle down. Where can you find these videos? On Instagram. Follow me there. Subscribe on the YouTube channel. If you'd like to watch the full-length videos, check out patreon.com slash If you'd like to fiscally, financially support the show. If you've been with me from the get-go, sending all the love right back to you again. If you're just joining us today, there's a ton of videos for you to check out, but also no particular order. So just... Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Do yourself a favor. Do your family members a favor. Do your uh, coworkers a favor. Do your boy a favor if you like. And if you don't, do it anyway. Let's get right into it. First of all, first and foremost, shout out to everybody from Canada, down south in the United States, further down south, Mexico, South America, over there in Europe, Asia, Africa, Antarctica, Papua New Guinea, New Zealand, Australia, the Austrians, uh, the Germans, or the Germans, uh, the Dutch, or Deutsch, uh, the Deutsch, or or the, or the Senegalese, or Papua New Guineas, we already said that one over there, you get the point, Thailand, Bangkok, China, China, over there in Hong Kong, over there in Vietnam, over there in Finland, but all over the place, North Pole, South Pole, underwater, in a cave underwater, beneath the depths of the ocean, bottom of the ocean, open up a hatch, drill a hole, make a bunker under the ocean if you're tuning in i don't know how you get reception down there but nonetheless it's impressive it's fucking impressive Neuralink, starlink elon musk is hooking you up down there damn that's really good that's that's good services right there shout out to everybody joining me it's again 30th july 31st is the end of the month it's the end of the month bitch ladies and gents Let's just let's just get right into it, shall we? Girl, I just wanna say your tits are around and that's okay with me. I just wanna let you know, girl, your tits are around. Yeah, your tits are around, girl. I just wanna let you know I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that, cause your tits are round, girl. I just wanna let you know that your tits are round in case you were mistaken. You're like, what shape is my titties? It, it's round, your tits aren't circular. A circular that maybe they are circular your tits definitely are circular they're, they're they're round they're not cubic they're not they're not they're not triangles i'll say that girl it's not a rectangle girl i just wanna say your tits are round and i'm okay with that more than okay with that what a perfect shape it's two of them too in case you run out of one because you use one up too much is always a that's the good thing about tits is always a backup tit ladies and gents let's get right into it shall we it's wednesday it's the end of the month the rent is due we're halfway through the are we halfway through the year already holy smoke i believe we're jerry february march april may june july we're more than halfway through those holy smokes that's right we're more than halfway now more than halfway through 2024 so let's get a sip of this shit right here. Let's get right into it. Ah, excuse me for a second. I want to get a little bit of that caffeine in the system. In the, in the, in the, oh. Feeling good. I hope you're feeling good wherever you are. Feeling I, right. I feel I right. Not feeling like too good, but not feeling like not good either. Like right in that dead center, right in the middle. As always, but... I believe if I'm listening correctly to all you out there, you are just, everybody's wondering what to, what's the ne next thing? What's, what's an exciting thing that you could get? Whether it's a service, whether it's a, whether it's a, just a lifestyle, whether it's something that we might have had in the past that we no longer have just because we're a little bit, you know, we, we are, globally speaking, the species has been fucking up and up the game, you know, everybody's getting comfortable, which is nice, but like, not to say that people aren't uncomfortable, but... We weren't as uncomfortable as the, the years past. Like our ancestors used to be out in the wild and shit, just walking on bare feet, you know, just working a bush, just a giant bush and a spear and going out there hunting, gathering, getting bruised up. And that's what I noticed. In life, we used to get bruised up, ladies and gentlemen. And we don't have that much bruising happening unless you're out there, like, yeah, unless you are one of those people that calls themselves a klutz or a, or a, you know, I'm a, I, uh, you know me, I'm always picking up bruises here and also you've, you've seen people that uh, say that, 
and that'll you know manifest a bruise in their life but that's what i noticed that we are missing bruises from our lives that's why i like to introduce to you the all new brand new company that will come up to you wherever you happen to be and give you fake bruises so you can go out there in the real world and just fucking front on people just fucking show up to your household but these people professionals will show up to your household all right or your place of work or when you're sleeping it doesn't even matter when you're they will get in there you're like i have a security system they won't be able to get inside the once i set the alarm they won't be able to breach the interiors without setting off the alarm they, don't worry we will get in there chimney sweep that shit. we will get in there you hear me we'll get in there from the roof the back door if you happen to have one if there's an underground little secret little chamber you've made we'll get in through there as well we will make sure you are fit we are fake bruising you up so that you can go out there in front of your family members and be like just just walk in there with an extra little bit of a boost in confidence just that your wife will thank you after not after she sets the babes to after you set the babes to sleep after you read a couple of bedtime stories with your bruised eye and then your kids will look at you and be like daddy's a hero then why did you get that bruise, daddy? Daddy, what got that? Why is the bruise on your face? Dad, is it real? Can I touch it? And be like, don't touch it. Don't, don't touch it. It hurts. Ah, ah, it hurts, little Johnny. But don't worry, because daddy's, daddy's out there taking the bruises so that you don't have to. Or one day you'll let him know that he too or she too can get fake bruises so that they can go up to their family and friends and just again walk with a little bit of, a little bit of the chest out, a little bit of, extra boost in confidence, a little bit of just whatever it takes. Just because that's what it is. You walk into a room, people see you, you got a bruise under your eye. What happened? Don't want to get into it. Don't even, don't even need to get into it. You don't even literally need to, as long as you walk in with a bruise under your eye. Or, you know, just a nice bruise. If you happen to be wearing uh, short shorts or short jorts uh, or a skirt or a kilt, or you are just lifting up your your dashiki a little bit just to tan your legs as well because now you got a weird tan because your neck is all red but your torso is all white. You look like one of those multicolored ice cream cones. It doesn't matter. What I'm trying to say is that if you lift up the dashiki and just reveal to the familia that there is some sort of a bruising taking place on your inner thigh, upper inner thigh, people will be like, oh, what's... What's Salami up to? They'll say that. What's this guy up to? He'll be like, I don't want to get into it out there. It doesn't matter. People will, but that's the thing. All of a sudden, you become more dependable. All of a sudden, you become more reliable. All of a sudden, people will be walking up to you. You know what? I think that, I think you might be at a company. You might be, John, you might be working at a company. Just walk in there with a bruise on your neck. All tidied and, you know, all fucking pampered up. But nonetheless, with a bruise, just fucking suited up. Suited, tooted, let's go, booted, but also a bruise on your neck. People walk, John, what happened to you? And you don't want to get into it. Set the briefcase on the table. Let's get into business. And the people will be like, oh man, look at John, giant bruise on his neck, but still wants to get down to business. Fucking I think John's due for a upgrade or a overload or a whatever they call it at work or a raise or a promotion or a promotion raise. John's due for a raise. We're going to make sure his chair is extra boost. He's got to get a booster seat. John's due for a raise. Don't want to see John get any, just, you know, make sure he's seated, high, elevated seating for John as well. Get a raise or just move up a level on the complex that you're working at, whatever building, office building, or move up a level. John's got a couple of bruises. He's a go-getter out there. But that's, what, that's the power of bruises. But we don't have that. You know how hard you got to work to get a bruise unless you're like a young and up and coming athlete. You might pick up a couple. But like average folks don't have time to pick up bruises. Everybody's just like, but imagine, ladies, imagine you, imagine you and your girlfriends. Imagine you and your girlfriends get together for drinky poos. And you're talking about how you smashed some cock over the weekend. And they'll all of a sudden be like, what's that bruise on your neck, Jen? Jen, what's that? Was he too rough? And you're like, no, he's a jelly. He's a perfect gentleman. Got a nice... The beautiful six inch cock, but he's a gentleman. No, the bruise is not from the cock I was riding. It's actually, it's, I don't want to get into it. Jenny will say that. And all of a sudden, it'll just like spark a little bit of whatever's in the circle amongst the femmes out there that Jen's out there getting it. She's getting her cock on the weekend, but also fucking taking time to sit out for drinks, but also going out there and working a couple of side hustles.
which has become recently main hustles. But that's the power of bruises, but you don't have to go actually get bruised up. This company will do that. Fake bruise company is what I'm trying to tell you, ladies and gentlemen. You're welcome. You're welcome. Instead of having to go out there and break a leg, instead of having to go out there and actually remove an elbow, fake bruise company. We will come to you wherever you are, in an elevator, down the up and down the escalator as you we will five minute bruise up. Let's go. Fake bruise company. Sign up now. Ladies and gentlemen, boys, it's Wednesday. All right, it's July 31st, the end of the month. Let's get right into it, shall we? Let's get a sip of this for a second. <sighs> that is nice. I'll say this in no particular order. We'll see where it all goes. We'll see where it all goes. But I do want to say this. I do want to say this. I've been reading a little bit. I've just been, just been, you know, on the on the lookout for interesting stories, interesting topics, interesting things that are coming. I've noticed a few things. I'd like to bring it to your attention because you might have noticed as well. Let me ask you this. Before the, you know, specifically, it's really, I think it was, it was definitely happening before the Pandy Schmandy, but it's definitely, I believe, at least due to, due to the articles that I'm reading, it's definitely on the rise. But if, let me ask you, if you wanted to play a little bit of Russian roulette, if you wanted to play a little bit of dice, if you wanted to play a little bit of, you know, uh, just, you know, Monopoly with, ex with actual money, if you wanted to play double dutch, if you wanted to, you know, see who can, who can jump rope the most, where'd you, where'd you go? Just all, where'd you go? If you wanted to bet on something, if you wanted to just, you know, have a couple of babies and then go uh, set your kids up against other families with babies and I don't know, maybe, maybe give them, maybe, maybe give them stun guns just to be like, see which kid's going to stun gun the other kid first and bet on it and see which kid could stand the stu wh whatever your game happened to be with you. Wh where would you go if you wanted to bet on your child with a pellet gun or a, you know, or, or boomerang, you know, where did you go if you were to train your dog with a boomerang? and fucking set it against other dogs with boomerangs and throw a boomerang and wanted to see who would retrieve out of the seven dogs that are not competing in this little competition, who would retrieve the boomerang first? You, where would you go? Where would you go, ladies and gentlemen? I'll, I'll wait for you while you type the answers in the comment section. Go ahead and do that shit because it helps boost the algorithms for the show because I think that's what it takes. Algorithm needs to be just spat on and stroked because that's how it works around here. We like to, algorithms like the little bit of the foreplay, but then the algorithm does like to eject as well. So I'll say this, commenting, leaving a like button, just for the sake of it, fucking helps the algorithms. But we're not here to talk about that. I'll say this, where'd you have to go if you wanted to bet on your dog fetching boomerangs against other dogs? The track, the local track or the casino, that's where you needed to go. If you wanted to just, uh, you know, if you wanted to get together with a bunch of gentlemen, shady gentlemen, after midnight in some random apartment downtown where it's members only, invite only, reference only, password, knock, knock, who's there, incorrect, turn your ass around. This is an exclusive event happening, sir. You cannot come in here. If you got a couple of Rottweilers in the apartment, if you are setting up a nice, gambling den in the apartment where people can come play poker, where people can come play backgammon, where people can come play whatever the games you've got and bet money. Where are you You have to go to a casino or a nice underground casino in person. That's where you needed to go. You need to go where the lights were shining. You need to go where the action was taking place. You need to go to the horse race track. You need to just Oh, you want to see a bunch of dogs chase a rabbit? Not a real rabbit, of course, because that's inhumane or in, in animal lane. Because it would it'd be inhumane if the dogs were chasing a human. I bet there's a place for that as well. But guess where you needed to go to find the dogs chasing a person so you can bet on it? An actual casino facility, gambling facility is what I'm trying to tell you. But over the past few years, ladies and gents, over the past few years, we've seen a rise in online gambling. And ever since the Pandy Shmandy, when things got locked down, people losing their jobs, businesses going down, inflation taking a fucking, just taking it up, 
taking up the ass is where inflation is taking it. But nonetheless, just because we had, we had to print a lot of money, if you guys remember, we had to print a lot of money, inflation kicked in, and people were resorted to just online gambling, and apparently it's on the rise. And I don't know how I feel about that, but I did want to say this. I did want to say this. There was something to it back in the day if you wanted to gamble. There is something respectable about a man losing his house in person. There was something about a man who was, or a woman, who was willing to show up to an establishment, get some cash, take out the actual physical plastic out of your pocket, go to the ATM, take out some cash, go sit at a table, look at the other gentlemen or ladies at the table, nod, make a couple of gems, make a couple of, make a little bit of effort in small talk, make a little bit of eye contact, or maybe don't make any eye contact, because maybe that's, maybe that, maybe you shouldn't wear, maybe you shouldn't make any eye contact, because you want to hold your cards close to the best, as they say, because you're playing, I don't know too many card games, blackjack, you're playing poker, you're playing Texas Hold'em poker, that's one that I know by name, not by rule or how it, I don't know anything about poker. I'll say it, but that's it, it took you, it took you physically, you had to get in a car, you had to maybe gather a couple of friends, make a thing out of it, go in there in person, sit down and then be like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set a limit for myself, 10 bucks is the limit and that's all I'm gonna play. And then you realize soon that 10 bucks is no longer worth anything these days. So you're like, okay, okay, fine. All right, 10 bucks is not gonna do much, but I'll bet 50 bucks, 50, 100 bucks, we will set 100 bucks, all right, and that's my limit. And if I should go above 100, you'll ask your friend to slap you in the face and just shove a dildo up your mouth or just, you know, just make sure you're in there. All right, gotta grab her. We told, we told ourselves we're not going over $100 today. That's what you used to do. Couple of drinks, not over a hundred dollars, and it doesn't matter if you win or lose. See, we're here for the fun. We're here for the rush of the game. We're here for the love of the game, and the camaraderie and the communal aspect of gambling. So there was something respectable about that because it was a, you know, there was a little bit of a social aspect to it. There was a little bit of a funsies aspect to where you're just gathering with other like-minded folks having a couple of cocktails maybe you're sober maybe you're just drinking the diet coke it doesn't matter but you're out there you know you're giving back to the community there's employees at the casino at the inlet the local indian casino or just regular casino at the at the regular mob owned casino you're giving back because there are regular people who work there and at least you're contributing to some sort of an ecosystem where it's physical, you know, you, when you see a dealer and you're like, oh, I like this dealer, this dealer knows how to fucking hand out it every time and you make sure you find a nice dealer and you make a beautiful relationship and you make a little bit of small talk. How'd you get into this? And they're like, my dad was a gambling addict. Nice, high fives all around the table. And so the cycle continues, but bonding with each other. Beautiful, beautiful stories. Elderly women coming in, rolling in on their wheelchairs with like two oxygen tanks. One, one's a reserve and one she's just fucking, you know, chain smoking, but also oxygen. Just just get a dose of this, a little bit of oxygen, a little bit of, little bit of six. Oxygen, six, six oxygen. Just put the, if we could for elderly people who are residing in the casinos, if we could just, if we could just put a little bit of nicotine in the oxygen tanks, I think we should be, you know, so that they, so that they got more free hands to, Go and reach for the tiny little purse, which is filled with God knows how much money. Some of them sit there for hours. It's like, man, spend it on your cat or your grandchildren, but fuck them, spend it on yourself, whatever floats your boat. All I'm saying is there was a physical aspect to it, which was beautiful. And at the end of the day, you either won a little bit, which was nice. You doubled your money. You came out with 200 bucks. Maybe you went overboard and that night you spent 200 bucks and you came out with a thousand bucks. Who knows? Or maybe things went sour. Maybe things went down a little bit and you bet a hundred bucks and it didn't work out. You're like, I could win it back. I could win it back. And you put another hundred and you lost that hundred and you were like, oh, I just, oh man, all right, all right. One last, 300 is my limit. That's all I'm going to do. But three of that, we will make it back. All or nothing, 300. And you're, you lose the other hundred and you're like, okay. All right, one, another, another bill, another C note. And that is it, all or nothing. 
put it on black, roll it, let's go, snake eyes, everybody wins. You double your money and then that's when you get greedy. You're like, all right, I wanna roll now, boys. I wanna roll now, 800 bucks, all in. No, all or nothing, all in. You take your Rolex watch off your wrist, you put it on the table, you're like, that's worth whatever. And then you're like, eh, this, all or nothing. Double on black once again, boom, you lose. And you're like, oh, I can't believe I lost. I can't believe I lost. So now you're going out there emptying out your cards. You're, 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 you're going out there making phone calls to MasterCard, trying to take out extra lines of credits or whatever, however it works. And you're getting a little bit more cash. You're like, all or nothing, it's only 25 grand. All or nothing, all or nothing. Put a double on black, maybe pick another color. Maybe pick red this time, pick red this time. But this time is double on black. You lose 25 grand, you're taking out a second loan on your house. You're like, double or nothing, double or nothing. You put, you take your house, you remove it from the foundation, you bring it to the casino, you put it on the table, double or nothing on black. They're like, seriously, anything else but double or nothing on black. You're like, no, this time it'll be double or nothing on black. Double or nothing on black, it's red. You lose again, you lost your house. Good God. Your family's out there naked in the streets, begging, begging for change. You're, oh, but then you guess what? You don't have that money. You don't have that kind of money. Foreclosure and all that. So you are in debt for like $500,000 in one evening, which is nice. Because now, well, you got to pay. Well, you got to pay. You can't not pay because this isn't, this isn't how this shit works. Totally, this is a mob run. It's an organized crime run business. And we are going to get our money. So we will come there and somebody, some beautiful man in a nice Italian suit, standing at six foot seven, weighing 300 pounds, will come with a smaller statured fella buddy who's actually more tough than the larger fella, ironically. The smaller fella will start with your knees, work his way up to your midsection, work his way up to the neck. You're on the floor now. He's stomping on your neck, which is nice. It's the most kind of action you've had in some time. It's been a little bit of time between you and your wife and there's some intimacy issues that we're not gonna get into today, but this is, it's good, it's nice. Kind of like a massage if you really think about it. But now you get a reminder that you gotta go out there and get a couple of jobs to make back the money that you owe. Cause you got 30 days or, or else it's your, it's, your, it's your, actually it's your life now. And man, there is nothing like that adrenaline. You can't put a price on that sort of adrenaline. You literally can't, which, which is, which is why I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, that we used to have a way of doing things where there was some sort of a circle of life. Sure, it wasn't perfect. Sure, the people who were stomping on your neck later down the line eventually became your friends if you happen to be able to pay them off and they'll let you back in, of course. And sometimes the story didn't end so well. Now you're on a wheelchair, but what did we learn? We learned that in-person interactions are way more powerful, way more impactful. They are just, it hits you because you're there touching, smelling, interacting with other people. There's some beauty in that. Interacting with other people. There's some beauty in that. Where you're like, I know full well that this mob run casino is going to take my money, but I can't help it, man. I love these guys. Here's my money. Take it. Take it. But now... Now, ladies and gentlemen, the game has changed. Although that still exists and it's still in full effect, there has now been an uptick in online gambling, which takes away from all the random events that could have happened were you not given the option to just have a casino on your phone. Now you could just be any say. You don't even need to leave your couch. You don't need to leave the toilet. You don't need to, you could just be showering and gambling. You could be in the office pretending like you're working because that's what most work is because it's just a lot of showing up and wearing suits and pretending and eventually things do get done. But I don't know, there's so much downtime. So I know even more downtime with automation. So guess what you're going to be doing? Online gambling is what you're going to be doing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now we got gam. There's a, there's a casino in your pocket. This is straight up because there's so Power of the phones, man. I love them. There's so many beautiful things to them, but there's also the power of just just bet my life right on the line, right here. There's something right there. And everybody's doing it. Sports is heavily embedded with gambling. A lot of the, you know, every this sport is brought to you by gambling this way. And gambling, you know, it's just 
I, I'm not, you know, I'm not against gambling. I, I like to, you know, I'm not a gambling man myself. Like I'll like, you know, I've, I've probably in my, I, I, yeah, I'm not a big gambler. I'll say that I've played a little bit of this, that, and the other, but not, I don't know much to be honest with you. So I'll say that, but I do like, I do like people having freedoms, expressing themselves, doing things of their own free will. If you want to gamble, you should definitely buy it. You know, you should definitely have that option of gambling. But I did like the fact that there was something about getting up, making a thing of it, making an effort to get up there and be like, I want to make an effort to lose my money. Whereas now it's all these games and gambling mechanisms are on our devices and people are, people are getting addicted. People are getting addicted and it's, and it's just one of those things. I, I just want to say if you want to, you know, there was something more respectable about a man showing up with his baby and setting the baby on the poker table and saying, Baby, all or nothing, double on black. There was something beautiful about that. So what? You lost the child. So what? But the memories. And how resilient is that kid going to be? Telling his or her life story. How did you end up here in 18, 25 years? Somebody will ask him. Funny, funny you should ask. Daddy put me on a poker table and said double or, double or nothing on black. Because that's how poker works. There's something beautiful about that. I just... Yes, there is the quick access option, of course, which is there's convenience with our phone. There's something about it. We do need to uphold actual brick and mortar, you know, stores or mom and pop shops or just, you know, underground gambling dens. There was, we do need to uphold certain things. Just there's, we, we yeah, we can't go all, there needs to be a balance. I, I, that's why I am promoting more underground gambling dens. There should probably be more availability of at least if not underground overground there should be some there, there should be more casinos and in-person casinos where like-minded individuals can go there and lose money together so that they're not feeling alone because if you're alone losing money that's just that's isolating that's very sad but if you're losing money in groups man who's even losing money at this point if everybody's losing right so good times are to be had i'm just saying i read an article that said australians Aussies are now, you know, put shrimp on the barbie, but also put double or nothing on black is what they're doing. They're getting in kangaroos and riding to their couch and sitting down and betting online. Shout out to my Australian friends. Hey, mate, I'd like to visit one day. That doesn't sound Australian, but close enough, eh? Close enough. And that's, that's one of our mottos here. Close enough. That I'm good enough. You're, you're good enough. You're not good enough. You're good enough. Not good. You're right there in the center, aren't you? Just doing things. So, yes, would I like to visit Australia? Of course. Would I like to show up there and see people up and about? Of course. Do I want to see them losing their livelihoods to their phones because they're gambling all willy-nilly on it? No. No, because I want to see an Aussie just fucking digging for gold out in nature, going to the beach, surfing, fighting the ozone layer. I remember being a kid and at one point that was a that was a thing back back when I was a kid growing up a little bit I heard a little bit of that I heard that I didn't, I didn't even know what it meant at the time like Australia's ozone the, the ozone layer or Australia's like there's a hole in the ozone layer they said that Australia the sun rays can really be damaging to your sky I, I heard that I remember that I don't even wrote I don't even know where I heard it but that's what I but I but they, they overcome that I think I don't know how it works I don't know how the did somebody go up there and patch up the ozone layer was it why was the ozone layer how did the hole get in there? Who, who poked the ozone layer? Did the ozone layer go and have unprotected sex with who knows what and end up getting, a, you know, did it just keep getting larger and larger things inserted into itself until eventually it just became a gaping hole of it? Nobody hears about, we don't hear about the ozone layer anymore. Bring that back. Fuck it, we got too many things to, there's plenty things to concentrate on. I'm glad that the ozone layer is patched up now, I think, I don't know. But all I'm saying is to my Australian friends, stay strong. Uh, get out there, there's help. There's other people like you and other people around the world who so it's not just the Aussies. I know plenty of people, I've seen it. I see they're addicted to their gambling devices on their phones and they are just betting their lives away. Just, you know, doesn't matter how much it is. It's a, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful disease and it's good to be alive. And I love it. Just being alive with you guys and gals out there. Sip, sip to the gang. Let's... Uh, let's get a sip of this shit right here. Let's always remember, it's summertime. Stay hydrated.
drink lots of jizz, drink lots of female ejac so that you are not going out there and feeling all kinds of woozy out there. Remember, female ejac has twice the power of water. Brought to you by female ejac. Girl, your tits are round, I just want to say. I'm okay with that, girl. Your tits are round, girl. I want to say that I'm okay with that. It's okay when your tits be around, girl. Your tits are round. I just want to let you know that your tits are round, girl. Boys and girls, ladies and gents. What else is going on in and around the world? I'll say this, uh, you know, there is, some people might view the next topic, the next, you know, point of discussion as, you know, it, it might be devastating to some, it might be a, an L for some, or it might be a W for others. I like to, wherever the opportunity comes about, I like to just prop myself up and say that I'm available, that yes, yeah, yes, and so what? What am I talking about, ladies and gentlemen? Let's, first of all, let's get another sip of this shit right here. Get to it, won't you? I like to take my time. Throw your tits around and I wanna say, I'm okay with that, girl. Your tits are well, and I'm okay with Round. Mexico, shout out to my Mexicans. Uh, viva la raza. Uh, muchas gracias, amigos. Tortillas, Doritos, Sanchez. I will say this another Mexican drug cartel kingpin has been arrested, which is devastating to some, but also. We'll get into it. Another beautiful man with a mustache. A beautiful man with a tan and a mustache was just recently arrested along with another beautiful Mexican fella. El Chapo's son, if I'm not mistaken, alongside with another cartel kingpin, Lord Kingpin, Lord Drug Lord Kingpin, King Drug Lord Kingpin, Drug Lord. Arrested in somewhere in Texas, I believe, because he and... El Chapo's son got in a plane somehow, landed in Texas, and somehow ended up getting arrested. I believe the gentleman's name is El Mayo. I don't think that's his actual name, but it's self-explanatory. His name is El Mayo, which is Spanish for, I believe, Mayo. I'm going to, yes, yes, I know Spanish. El Mayo. The Mayo. Our Mayo. Not ketchup, not mustard, mayo. I believe that's his real name, or at least nickname. That's his real nickname. Arrested, which is sad, which is fucking sad. How many more beautiful men with tans and mustaches are we gonna see? Are we gonna see just dragged into the judiciary, dragged into the court of law, dragged? I don't know how he got arrested, to be honest with you. Why did he? You're a drug lord kingpin, kingpin drug lord, kinging and pinning and drug lording. Why would you go into a jurisdiction that you're you're in charge of all the drugs that are being funneled into the United States, at least like in charge of a whole lot of it, maybe not all of it, but like a lot of it, or you're a drug lord. I'm sure there's other independent people doing it, but there's, you're the kingpin. You're the, you're one of the, you're one of the big dogs. You got a nice thick mustache. That thing has evolved into a start off with a pencil, thin mustache but now it's been like you know two three decades of mustache and that is just you know fucking it's mustache and fentanyl and that shit you can oh you take one of those whiskers and just sniff it you'll fucking get woozy for days but a beautiful man has been arrested and which which is which which sucks which sucks ladies and gentlemen so el mayo drug kingpin lord arrested which creates a vacuum and this is because now you're going to have, and every time one of these beautiful drug lord kingpins gets arrested, uh, there's infighting, there's more gang wars, which leads to more violence and doesn't stop anything. It doesn't stop the, the drugs will keep on coming in. The drugs will keep on coming in. The drugs won't stop. What increases is more criminal activity, more infighting, 
and you know more and more bloodshed do you like bloodshed leave a comment so i'm sick and tired of this shit i'm sick and tired of this shit i saw this and i'm like all right that's very disappointing sad to see another beautiful man fall into the hands of the whatever is falling into but i see an opportunity here and i want to step up and i say i'm ready i said to my i, I thought about it for a brief moment and i said i think this calls i think this is an indication where you can walk in and fill that vacuum up and i want to i'm stepping up ladies and gentlemen every every once in a while an opportunity comes about in every man's or woman's life that you gotta step up and take responsibility and say that you know what i'm not gonna wait around and say somebody let somebody else do it that's somebody else kind of, ah, we got to fix this thing with somebody else. I don't want to say I'm here to step up. There is a position that's recently been vacated, obviously, due to the arrest of El Mayo. Okay, so the hiring, there's a hiring, there's a position needs to be filled right now. All right. Drug Lord Kingpin position is empty. They don't have a drug Lord Kingpin. I would like to step up and I'm... I guess yeah. I guess this is this is the this is this is what I'm saying. I'm coming out and saying that I am applying for drug lord kingpin position, like ch chief executive drug lord kingpin. If you like to see me as your chief executive drug lord kingpin, cartel kingpin, leave a comment. I believe it's a it's a it's a position. It's emptied out. There's nobody there. Vacuum. We don't like vacuums. We like we like you know brooms, little dustpan vacuums. You know, unless it's like unless it could be you know unless it could be merged with some sort of like sex bot that'll sit on your cock and just make a nice tight vacuum. Outside of that, really just uh, for cleaning purposes too. I could see how there is you know there's many companies are doing great things. I'm not here to talk about you know technology today. But I am here to talk about a vacant position of drug lord kingpin. And I would say that I would make a great, excellent drug lord kingpin. The, one of the best, probably. One of the best. Uh, what I bring to the table is an outsider's perspective. Totally on the outside of the drug world in terms of like, you know, I, I've never, you know, you know, it's outsider's perspective coming out. I think you need a fresh pair of eyes on this. Yeah, I think we need to re we need to re to re examine what is going on the relationship between drugs and how it gets to because it's a thing people use all the time, many of things. So you got a good product that needs to be to sell that shit. It sells itself. You just really need people handling it. It's, it sells as one of those things. It just sells itself. Just leave it out there. It'll be gone in two seconds. It's so it doesn't mean it's not even selling at this point, really. It's like selling crack to a crack addict, which is really easy. Although I'm not advocating selling crack to crack addicts. I, what I, and that's one of the things that I'll bring to the table. I will make sure as the next drug lord kingpin that the purest of cocaine is getting in, in and out of the borders. In and because people all, all around the world. And eventually I would just like to become the drug lord kingpin now because I know there's a huge market and of course Europe loves cocaine, Asia, fuck it. everybody loves cocaine. I don't, I've never done it myself, but everybody, like, there's a big market, there's always a big market for substances, and there's always vacuums, and you're tired of these changing faces, revolving doors, all right? You need a stable face for 20, 30 years, change this thing around, and this is what I'll say. This is what I, I, at one point you realize that all these things kind of, sort of, kind of work, uh, crime and punishment, crime and anti-crime they work really close and, and the higher you kind of peek through and look at the whatever the underbelly you kind of seem to find that the lines kind of merge and things get blurred and i'd like to say that i i, I will say this i will say this as a drug lord. first of all i will bring discipline this is lots of discipline to the organization we will have we will have Working hours, normal office hours, which is for the drug industry is 24-7. You thought I was going to... No. What did you think? If you come to work for us, 
This isn't, this is go get a nine to five. If you're looking for a nine to five, then go get a nine to five. This is not a nine to five. This is a 24, this is specifically that, hold on. Specifically after midnight is when we really do well after midnight. Really, when people are just jonesing for the goods. After midnight, we could charge whatever we want. But we won't, we won't, because we got morals and ethics and shit. We care about our clients. We love our clients. Not like these other ones that don't care about their clients, left, right, and center, just like sprinkling fentanyl and where or fentanyl or whatever else they could find in it just to cut it up and make a little bit of extra product. We want you coming back healthy. Loose usage of the term healthy, but like good enough. Good enough to come back and use more. I don't want you dead. Because then who am I gonna sell the drugs to? And that's the that's the short-sightedness of all these beautiful men who have somehow just mastered the art of the mustache but failed to see the business potentials down the line. People living healthy for 70, 90, 120 years but still using your products instead of fucking dying on the streets at an early age. It's just sad, sad for business. I mean, sad for humanity, but like way, way more sad for business. So I will bring discipline to the organization. I will crack the whip. I will, I'm actually cracking the whip, but I'm also removing whipping. Like I'm removing violence. Like we're gonna have one or two couple of sessions of violence just to kind of like set the, set the tone. Like we'll go really violent in the beginning. Just I will crack a couple of heads. I'm not, not, not like, not myself, not myself. I'll have somebody do it. Cause you know, I'm the drug Lord King and I can't get my hands dirty. There's gotta be, there's gotta be, I gotta remove myself. From the as far as possible. Technically, I'm not even the drug king cartel kingpin. If you'd like to see me in that position, not yet anyway. Not yet anyway. But thanks to you and your comments, I could soon, really, really just fucking get up there. And I will make sure that after the few heads that needed to be cracking, like I'll crack the heads. Now again, I'll personally crack the heads. Make sure that the fucking organization is up. And like we will have this proper facilities. All right. No more. Uh, dirty men with, you know, just, we will make sure they shower before they come in into the stomping facility. I'm assuming somewhere down the production line, somebody is rolling up dirty pants and just stomping on something. And like, no more, no more sweat, blood and tears. Okay, no, wait, no, we, no, no. We need more blood, sweat and tears in our products. And that's how we guarantee purity. We will, I will make sure of that. I will make sure that the workers get benefits. Your, your, your kingpin will make sure you have benefits. Like you have all free drugs, free drugs for everybody. Whoever works at the facility, free drugs, free coke. I don't care what gets you going, but as long as you're going, like not anywhere, like in life, just stay there, but let go. Stay, stay right there, but then get to, get to stomping and get to chopping. But get to, I also need, People, we need uniforms because everybody's just walking and all willy nilly. Okay, fine. We don't need uniforms. Actually, you know what? We don't need uniforms. Scrap that. Scrap that. No uniforms. I want you to be able to express yourself. Like, not too much. Don't want to hear too much talking. I'll say that. Get to work. Get to work. But, you know, just through your attire, express yourself. That's as much expression. But then get to work, really. Fentanyl, removing all of that from the cocaine, removing all of it, no more fentanyl, no more, just, just pure, pure coke. Back like, you know, never never experienced it and wasn't alive to experience it, but the pure, pure good shit from the 80s, because I heard good shit was around and that's when people, so that good, good stuff from the 80s, Colombian, Peruvian, Bolivian, straight up, cut, but like uncut, you know what I mean? Profits, up, margins, up, sales, up, people, down momentarily, but like up again after, but down, but up after. So like up and down, people will be up and down, but the profits, up. I will bring ruthlessness to the organ. And by, and by, the, by, by that, I mean that I will merge all the various gangs, MS-13, 14, 15, all the MSs, Multiple sclerosis, uh, fucking diabetes. I will bring all the, you know, 
glaucomia, I will bring all of them together, make sure they are, you know, instead of going out there and spray painting, you know, leukemia on the side of the street, oh, this is, oh, it's the leukemia, this is the L cancer. It's like, no, no, fam, we are one, we are fun, and we are doing it together. So I will merge all of them and make sure that they all work together because at the end of the day, everybody wants to make cash, everybody wants to, want to have, everybody wants to have a little bit of fun, and everybody wants to be industrious. So ruthless, ruth through love though, through love and just understanding and really just cutting the noise and getting down to the bottom line, which is cash. You know, that, that chatter, let's just, let's just do that. At the, at the end of the day, everything is, you know, in, in cash we trust, in, in coinage we trust, in money we trust. That's, that's humanity at this point and here we are rocking and rolling and it is cash money, one money, cash money, life money, cash line, money line, money above all, cash money rules, money, 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 cash money. All right, girl. All right, dog. So I'm going to be ruthless again, but through love, through sitting down and understanding that why are these guys fighting? Because they're, they're fighting for crumbs. Well, I will say, hey, you can, all have, you can all have crumbs. I think there's a little bit of discrepancy because they're fighting over there. I'm like, you will have, your drug lord kingpin will make sure you will all have enough, enough to crumbs. Or maybe I'll up the crumbs into like actual, you know, I will, this is my long-term plan. I, I want the, because there again, once the lines get blurry between the, you know, crime and punishment versus, you know, the, the law and the, because the lines are blurry. And at some point you do notice that certain, you know, levels of certain people and parts of the government need to be involved for certain things to happen. All right. Certain organizations at one point or another need to either knowingly or un unknowingly, wink, wink, no, knowingly, unknowingly, wink, wink, nudge, 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 let things slide in places where they, they need to need let slide. slide. Sliding is good. Slipping, I'm a big fan of slipping and sliding myself. Slipping and sliding since 89, actually, not going to lie to you. So, going to let things slide. But I will open it up and I will merge the company. with. I will first merge the gangs. Then I will make the actual official marriage between, between you know, security, policing, government, and drugs. And I will, I will merge the illegal with the legal. I will make sure that the officers who get the cut under the table can walk in, head, heads held up high, and get their cut over the table like respectable gentlemen and women who partake. So we will merge, merge them together. What was once illegal and legal will just become one giant money-making machine. Because really, at the end of the day, <laughs> illegal, schmilegal, am I right, everybody? So I'm just, yes, I will eventually merge, you know, people who are maybe, I don't know, if you're working for the, you know, not saying all, but if you're in like, if you're like in the CIA, some of you are like involved or were involved, but no longer involved, but still involved. Now I will get everybody in together because you have, a, you have these mustache people, beautiful mustache men. Every 10, 5, 15 years, whatever, a year or two, they, 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 they get put away. And it's just, it's, they, get, they get put away, vacuum, another one comes in, vacuum, in charge for power for a little while, leaves, vacuum, you know, I'm just one guy in charge, just, I will, you know, I'm, of course, there are, there are impediments, I'm not, I'm not Mexican, which, but I am, I do get tanned during the summertime, which is, speaks a lot for itself. I too have a, you know, I'm not going to say that I have the, but, you know, the mustache game, could be available, could be, and I will whip it out. I will fucking whip it out. But again, with great mustache comes great responsibility. If you elect me as your drug lord kingpin of the globe, I will get a mustache. I'll buy a mustache. That is a guarantee. And uh, tattoos, 
I may not look the part because I don't have as many tattoos as some would like. I would like to bring to your attention that most drug kingpin cartel kingpins don't have many tattoos, none of these visible. I have very limited ones. I've been waiting for the, you know, down the line. I want to get more, of course, and I will make sure to incorporate some sort of, I will pay homage to the cartel some in some shape or like I will, there will maybe I'll get like a maybe I'll get like a little tattoo of a table filled with bricks and you know a couple of respectable gentlemen just discussing business around it like I will get that depiction on my body at one point or another so what I'm trying to say is that what I bring to the table is an outsider's perspective if we can just recap for a second a lot of ruthless love just understanding what do the workers want what do the gang members want what do the officials want money everybody wants money everybody wants money and business so let's just let's just cut through the lines let's make sure that the impure shit is not even manufactured let's ask our brethren and sisters in other countries that contribute to the making of the crappy parts of the drug work because there's, there's benefits to all of it you know i'm not saying people should or shouldn't i'm not here to do that i'm not i'm, not, I'm just here to focus on the main thing which is money all right everybody loves it everybody wants it everybody breathes it talks about it sleeps about it uh, you know, goes around all this, that, and so it's all cash money, one life, you know, doing it. And I just want to say that, yes, I'm ready to step up and fill the vacuum. So once again, if you'd like to see your boy become L, I got I need a, I need a nickname and, but I'm, I'm not going to pick my own nickname. I believe a good nickname is given to you by your peers. Adversaries will be removed. So mostly peers, if you'd like to come up with a drug lord kingpin nickname for your boy leave a comment we'll see if it catches on doesn't matter if it doesn't i'm uh, here to take care of business essentially i'm here to merge the feds with the guys that are also maybe that at one point they weren't feds but got turned to you you have no you can't fight the system all right that's Event, and then the system can't fight fight you either. So it's it's, it's, it's we're going to get married eventually. The eventually all of it will just become one. We will set up proper manufacturing facilities where the best, highest quality of cocaine will run through the streets. Just well, you know, like metaphorically speaking, I don't want to actually see cocaine running. Like if cocaine itself started running, then I would. It'd be, it freaked me out a little bit, not going to lie, if cocaine took form of a human body and like started jogging for its health. I'd be a little bit alarmed, but I'm going to I'm going to stop that. I'm going to I'm going to make sure it doesn't happen. So, again, what I bring to the table is a whole new perspective. If you hate vacuums, uh, if you're a fan of Swiffer Wetjet, uh, you know, big ups out there to the fam holding it down. Uh, again, keep keep focused on what's at stake, really. And it's a lot of. A lot of cash, a lot of dough, lots of cheddar. So, if you want to see a new way of doing things, my offer is on the table. El Capitan is ready to rock and roll and take business to new heights where it deserves to be. Global syndicate. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, of course, you know that it's that time of year or that time of years because it comes around every, I believe, four years. It's the Olympics. The Olympics are happening right now. I believe it's taking place in Paris this time around. And uh, I've not sat down to watch any of it as I'm, as I'm gaining more experience, as, my, as, as I see a few strands of beard now come in and gray. I think that uh, that that fucking sucks. I'm not. I'm not. You know. I thought I'd be more open to the gray. You know, whiskers here and there. It's far and few in between. But nonetheless, they are. They are. That's that's fucking. That's gray. That's that's gray beards. And that's that's life. That fucking. Oh man. But I don't care. I'll get used to it. I can accept gray. I love gray. But I'll say this. As, as I'm aging, just like you, 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 you know, certain things that don't really matter to you as much start, you know, taking a further backseat and they even further backseat than the backseat. They're in the fucking trunk. They are no longer in the car. They're chasing the car. 
trying to trying to hook themselves to the rear bumper and just glide down the streets on a pair of roller blades, but that's unsafe. So you'll pump the brakes and they'll fucking just hit their head against the bumper and just land on the ground and you'll laugh riding off to the sunset. But I'm here to talk about the Olympics and the fact that it's taking place, but uh, you may have snoozed and you lost. You may have thought to yourself that, oh man, how do I, how can I make bank with the Olympics or just athletics in general? And how do I raise a baby that could potentially be an athlete baby that I could make bank off of? And I'm here to help you. I'm here to assist you. So you wanna raise an athlete baby that'll take the gold, you son of a bitch. You got aspirations for yourself that you didn't quite, for whatever reason, doesn't matter, you get another try with babies. And guess what, if they don't do it, did their babies might. And eventually, one of their ba some down, down the line, this is what it comes down to. If you wanna get into it. How to raise an athlete baby that you can bank on from the get go. It all really starts with proper seating. Proper seating, that's right. A lot of people just have the sex and they're like, we're trying, they do it, they have the baby with no, with no real, you know, no actual idea of am I gonna down the line wanna, wanna Olympic baby. And then all of a sudden their kid becomes a teenager and they're like, man, I, maybe you should have been an Olympic baby. It was too fucking late then. So you better start with the seating procedures, if you will. So when you are out there, you're like, how do I get a potential athlete baby who can turn into a you know powerhouse of a fucking marketable you know little fucking athlete baby that does back flips and front flips and side flips and inside out flips and outside in flips and flip just flipping out and flipping and just flip flap just fucking doing things you know what i'm talking about physical babies you know money makers fucking bank babies how do you make them starts with the seating my friends when you are doing this, when you're in your wife, ladies, when your husband is inside you, when you are about to have that baby, if you are, if you're planning on having a baby, because sometimes you do the sex without, you know, without, we could get a baby, we could not get a baby. You're, you're, you're loosey goosey with it. But if you're going there with plans of getting a baby that's going to be bankable baby, from the get go, you sit down. You have the sex, you sit, you do the tantric, right? You, you merge into one, you become one. Vag locked over peen, the peen is not leaving the vag. As you're about to orgasm, as you're about to orgasm, when you climax at the same time, when you climax, and again, it's very key, you do this at the same time. When you climax, you yell out, athlete baby, bankable Olympic baby, as you're coming, as you're, so instead of moaning and rolling your eyes back and curling your toes, do that on your own time later when the baby's made. Four, making, creating, manifesting an athlete bankable baby. Yell out, Olympics, Olympics, as you're twit, Olympic baby. All right, as you're coming, as you're, that is how you, you're like, how does that work? I don't know how it quite works, but I'm figuring out one step at a time myself, learning, Sex magic, sex magic. You, whatever you want, you say it at the time of simultaneous orgasms, get that baby right there, bank it in there, bank it in there. You're like, how does that work? I don't quite know, all right? There's others doing it. I'm not saying that there are, there aren't. The bin people do this shit is, yes, it's a thing. It's a thing, but it's often doesn't get used for positive things, but now I'm saying we use it for positive. And you're like, well, what if people don't use it? They already are using it for not positive things. I'm saying use it for positive things, all right? Concentrate on whatever you're doing, or even if you're not, I'll say this, I'll say this. Because they will use it, they will, they will use it to fucking, you know, some people might use it to bring back the, you know, Antichrist, some people might want to bring back other entities, some people, I'm saying you can use it for positive business and banking, all right? So instead of wanting to bring back the Antichrist or uh, whoever else, upon orgasm, Olympics, Olympic baby, right there, sex magic, Olympic baby, bank. 20 years down the line, that baby's doing fucking front flips, just 
Ugh, shot put right there. Just brought to you. And like, if you can like find a product that'll be good in like 15, 20 years. So merge Olympic baby with a good product. Something that's probably got a lot of history. I'll say just, I would say this, say something along the lines of Olympic baby Nike, do it. And you know, next thing you know, 20 years down the line, baby sponsored by Nike in the Olympics. Cause you can't just have a regular athlete baby in the Olympics. They don't make much money. They don't, they don't. Olympics don't pay. All right. But this is just the pathway for the Olympic babies or athlete babies. You could use this for, you know, they could be a soccer player or a basketball player if you want these things. I'm not saying that that's the only thing. Don't go all willy nilly. That's the only thing we did. And that's, you know, it takes a lot more than that. All right. Nature, nurture, all that shit. But if you want it from the seeding, if you want to, like, if you want to, but again, you gotta, you gotta keep that chip steady for a long time before you see any fruition of anything, you know, material. So just wanna let you know, it's doable. But then down the line, once the baby is out there, what are the things you could be doing? Because it's great to have just a yell out Olympic baby amongst yourselves while you're climaxing. And that could, you know, that could give you the basic, very minimal thing, but like you need to raise an athlete baby. So once the baby comes out, what do most babies have? Loose necks, stupid loose necks, weak, weak. Get the heaviest object you can find. All right, maybe not the heaviest object, but like get a book, get a dictionary. Once they're strong enough to do a couple of rolls, give them, a, give them something that they can hold on to so that they're, you know, they're. And then eventually, you know, get them to build large neck muscles. Give them a dead. Make your make sure your babies are doing deadlifts. If if your baby's not doing deadlifts by the time that he or she is two three months old, then you are wasting your fucking time. I thought you wanted a Olympic cash money baby. Then all right, deadlifts from two. Then uh, I would say make your baby. A lot of times. Parents will go to the babies to give them whatever it is that they need, especially in the, you know, the full mental years. Oh, the baby needs food. I got to go. Make sure the baby comes to you. That's how you get a sprinter or a runner. Sit there with your tit out and let the baby crawl to you. L lower your tit a little bit. They're not going to be able to obviously jump up and grab your thumb. I'm not saying never, you know, you, you might see a baby that'll jump up and grab a tit and that's going to be a dunker. That's going to be a dunker right there. That's going to be a high jumper right there. So make them work. Make them work, essentially. Get them to chase you around the house. When they're old enough and are able to make friends, make sure they're competing with their friends. Uh, give them a break, but not too much. Do you want an athlete baby or not? Okay. What really gets you to the finishing line is not, you know, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. So... Remember, always, and as they're growing up, just whisper a brand name, a brand name, something brand name, so that they become marketable, or at least know what that is, so that they, you know, if, if whatever happens to be the thing, I don't know what's going to be the thing in 20 years, maybe, maybe saxophones will be the thing in 20, maybe saxophones will go and become the biggest sponsors of everything in 20, I don't know, all right, so be, while you're, you know, raising your bitch, just, yeah, sprint and then throw a saxophone right at their face. So the, the, the next thing you know, 15, 20 years goes by, this kid's on the podium grabbing a medal, blowing out the sax and just fucking also doing, you know, nose dives into the crowd and fucking just, you know, just hammering it in. I don't know, whatever athletics, they just th throw in the ball and catching it, you know, go in the distance, but at a very fast pace. They're there, you know. Uh, I would recommend... You get one of those guns that they use to, you know, start a race. And from the earliest of, you know, stuff, I would say before the baby's born, get a gun and just pop it in the air so that they're accustomed to the, to the when, when the water breaks, I want you to, the second you see the water break, gun, so that the baby knows, oh, I gotta get out of here. You get out of here. All right, get out of here. Quick, quick. If they fail, Make sure that they learn from their mistakes. Don't, uh, you know, like, make sure that they know that there will only be one place for gold. And that means everything to the familia. That and the endorsements and the, and the Nike deal, of course. 
and don't limit them to make sure they're wearing multiple brands because the, the age of the future and even now is multiple because before it used to be like you're only loyal to one brand and when no oh, all the brands the sooner you get your baby covered in tattoos with brands gucci prada nike adidas diesel uh, exxon mobil like whatever chevron like who cares just the more brand name tattoos that they have so that they, when they remove their attires that are covered in brand names and sponsors so that people could see they're loyal like that. They're loyal. I would, you're like, I don't want to give my baby's brand name to like, I guess you don't want a fucking bankable baby then. <laughs> you want them to have regular eyebrows, be a regular baby, or do you want them to have fucking millions in the bank? Yeah, yeah, regular eyebrows or fucking brand name eyebrows. You be the, where do you want to be? A yacht or just a or just the you know inflatable boat. It's the, it's the time that you spend together with fat and all that. It's that's the, that's the important thing in life. But also above that is money, which will allow you to sure your baby will have weird eyebrows or no eyebrows because they shave the you shave the eyebrows. And you got a nice brand name tattoo that says fucking brought to you by Mercedes or whoever. This baby just drinks gasoline, but also likes nuclear fusion, like whatever the thing might be. Just think outside the box. Think of what will be, you know, oh, this kid really likes housing. Brought to you by Caterpillar, brought to you by whoever, you know, brought to you by NASA. Just what it doesn't matter. Marketable, brandable, open to everything. This kid likes fucking vegetables. But also he likes his meats too. He's a big meat farmer. All the meats, you know, brought to you by 100% pure beefs. Just fucking tattoo pure beef on his belly, her belly, doesn't matter. So that's the way to bank on it. And don't think that the Olympics is the only way to make maybes into athlete. But I, I would say that's probably like the least favorable place for them to make money. I would say, you know, put them in a league of some sort. You know, there's way more lucrative sports out there but again starts from a very young age and the age keeps getting younger and younger which is why i said you know what let's just go back to the fucking inception sex magic that shit into reality right there fucking athlete baby you know just after you finish coming shove a couple of you know basketball baseball tennis ball a tennis racket in there in the vagina of the mom so the baby is familiar as the baby's developing he he or she is just a, a small little tiny fetus comes out with a baseball bat, just meh, just knocking out of the park, just fucking whacks the doctor in the face, and everybody's like, oh man, what's his name, he's got an arm, and they shut up, who cares what his name is, look at the arm without baby, he's got a huge bicep, so that's how you do it, that's how you do it, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Thank you for joining me once again. Where can you find these videos? Uh, I'd like to remind you that you can find these videos every Wednesday and Friday dropped on Instagram, and where else? On the YouTubes for the fellow like videos. Uh, if I can subscribe, if you like to. And if you don't, do it out of spite. And if you don't want to do it out of spite, do it because you love to. And then check out patreon.com slash Rob if you'd like to fiscally, financially, once again, support the show because this is a one independent, tiny little podcast which is growing in your hearts and your minds. And thank you for also growing in my mind and in my heart and in my pants. Too. I will be back here again Friday. In the meantime, uh, keep on queefing, baby. I love y'all. Peace out. Get out of here.